Well, hello and welcome once again, J76NY here, and welcome to the Season 2 premiere of Suzerain. Uh, this is going to be quite a different playthrough from the uh, first season. Uh, first season I tried to play Anton Rain as a pretty uh, straight shooter for the most part. I uh, cared about the citizens of Swordland uh, and their future. Cared about his family and his friends. He was pretty loyal. And uh, this is going to be kind of the complete opposite. Uh, this playthrough is going to be called the Douchebag Playthrough. And it's uh, mostly for fun. Uh, mostly because I'm curious how this is going to play out with uh, what I plan to do with Anton. Um, if you're not familiar with Suzerain, it is a text-based game where you are the president of a hypothetical uh, country that is uh, surrounded by allies and enemies. Uh, the choices that you are given directly affect the course of the story. Um, I'm really interested to see how playing him as a complete prick is going to affect how the story goes and how different it's going to be from the uh, first playthrough. Uh, if you're interested in seeing a uh, more serious playthrough of Suzerain, I am going to link to uh, Season 1 at the end of this video. Uh, if you'd like to help the series get a little traction with the uh, YouTube algorithm, hit the uh, like button. Uh, leave a comment down below. Uh, if you're new here and came here specifically for Suzerain or just out of curiosity, welcome. Uh, if you want to follow along through the uh, douchebag playthrough, hit the subscribe. And uh, we'll see how things go with uh, the biggest dick south of Rumberg. So let's get this started. We go. Or am I enslavement and my freedom? You are my flesh, burning like raw summer night by some guy. Nineteen oh eight, Kingdom of Swordland. You open your eyes to this world you came from. Uh, let's see. I come poor. Poor with a chip on my shoulder, probably. Your parents named you Anton. As the only child of a farmer, you spent your childhood among wheat fields. Life was not easy. Too poor to afford a good education. The Rain family was caring regardless of the economically dire situation. Your parents always did their best to support you. Years passed. This does involve a lot of reading. Uh, granted, I'm probably going to breeze through some of it because... Uh, Choices are going to be a little bit easier. Just pick the worst one. During a history class at school, the bell started to ring unexpectedly. I heard a loud commotion outside. Everyone tried to figure out what was going on. The principal announced the historic revolution. The kingdom was no more. The Republic of Swordland was born. Uh, happy that we had the day off. Cares about the rest. After graduating, you pass the university exams with high marks. Even though your family was poor, the public education system made it possible to go to university. You had the opportunity to choose between several studies. You chose uh, law, economics, or history. We're going to go with law. In the first years, you attended a lecture with David Wissey. Remember that name. It's going to play later on. He was a well-known diplomat from the foreign ministry and a son of the president. After observing the hall in silence, he explained how the Supreme Court is obstructing justice in Swordland. He stated that laws should be applied fairly and that even members of the Supreme Court are subject to the same laws. Uh, agree in principle, question what you were being taught. Uh, I only cared about passing my exams. May 22nd, 1927. Soldiers entered the campus in the evening ahead of the first election. Many were in shock as the uniformed men create a security cordon and started arresting the teachers. A group of students started gathering in protest, along with your best friend, Peter Vectern. Remember that name? You decided to... Let's protest. One of the officers made a loud, annou officers made a loud announcement that echoed through the campus. General Luderin declared martial law in order to restore the administration. 
Please stand back and disperse to your rooms. Join the students that slowly marched towards the large group of soldiers. Suddenly, the soldiers charged. The student fell and was trampled as everyone started to run away. Hold your ground, Anton. Soldiers beat you relentlessly. It was a gloomy year. The arrested teachers were replaced by those that promoted conformism to the state. Olsword turned a blind eye to the things that were happening. He didn't want to stay idle and decide to jo decided to join. Uh, we'll go with the political debate group. Anton is going to be very focused on his own power, his own wealth. So, seems like a good way to start things out. The dozens of debates helped you hone your oratory skills while also helping you grow your network. Even though the debates were pretty heated between different groups, you all grew from sharing ideas. In one of the meetings, Peter introduced you to one of his friends, Monica, who was a volunteer for the Swordish League of Women, who were immediately attracted to her beauty. Politically charged environment led you to... Uh, socialists, the nationalists, or stay away. I'm going to join the Young Swords, the nationalists. Radio relayed that the communist general Rickard surrounded Luderan and his troops, demanding their surrender. They refused and heavy fighting broke out across the country. You just couldn't believe it. The army was fighting amongst himself. Portland plunged into chaos. Rickard's sudden attack caused even more bloodshed in the country. He seemed different compared to fascist Luderan. In your opinion, however, he was more of the same. So you participated in a protest march. You were chanting, Uh... A nation, one system, one people. We're united we stand, divided we fall. We'll go with that one. We are nationalists, after all. We were marching against Rickard. Students and soldiers reported supporting the coup gathered a few hundred meters away. Many socialists were among them. It happened. You knew something was going to happen. You stayed. There was a massive clash between the two sides. Soldiers began to beat the students. Tanks started to roll forward. In this chaotic moment, you saw a young girl about to get run over by a tank. I will warn her, but I will not risk my life. And she died. Never forgot her face as it got squashed underneath the tank. Clashes escalated into full-blown civil war. Horrors made you isolate yourself for a while. Monica helped you cope, and a love grew between the two of you. However, it was difficult time for love. A.S. must end. The Republic of Swordland, 1929. The charismatic Colonel Tarkin Soul orchestrated a sudden attack and brought an end to the war. He wrote a new constitution and restored stability. The people saw him as a savior. He formed the United Swordland Party and ran it as a presidential candidate. In the first ever elections, he voted for the United Swordland Party. USB won the elections by a large majority. After graduation, you kept seeing Monica and noticed her interest to marry. However, a letter arrived from the military calling you to fulfill your compulsory service. It's time to serve your national duty. Urgia region. February 1930. The Whalish Civil War. Devastating civil war had broken out in the neighboring country, Whalen. The distinguished Major, Joseph Lancia, remember that name, ordered you to lead your squad on a border patrol mission. It was a very cold winter night, and you began marching out of Gummerin Outpost. You could see your breath. After several hours of marching through the snowy hills, distant noises were heard. Visibility was too low to confirm the source. The squad crawled forward in formation and found a spot to observe. A group of refugees had made it beyond the border fence. You send them back. Do not come into my country. You filthy refugees. The refugees were in despair when they realized that you were taking them back to the border. Screams and protests ensued as they were restrained. You delivered them to the border guard. After several months of military service, your duties ended and you went back to civilian life. That was quick. 
1931. You and Monica decided to share your lives together. After receiving the blessing of her parents, a ceremony was hold, held in Holsor. During the same year, you were offered a high-paying job at the governing United Swordland Party. It was important to start your career on a good foot, so you accepted it. Uh, working for the ruling party was the easiest path to power. Financial compensation was too great to pass up. Uh, it was the best opportunity to change the country for the better. Uh, it's a tough one between these two. Uh, these are both going to be goals of Anton throughout the playthrough. Um, power and wealth. What should we focus on? Power or wealth? Go with what? Power. You became the legal assistant to one of the more experienced members of the assembly. Worked long and hard, staying late at work and going through hundreds of pages of legal documents. You were climbing the ladder. Soul strengthened the Republic by removing the institutions and symbols the former kingdom of the former kingdom from society. Things were also looking up for the country as a massive economic boom continued and people were the happiest they'd been in a decade. Election time came and it was decided. Park and Soul won again. April 2nd, 1934, Soul's second election win. The ongoing legal battle between the Justice Ministry and the Supreme Court puts you under a lot of stress, but your significant contribution to the legal case triggered an invitation to meet President Tarkin Soul himself, who offered you a key position. You were to become the youngest member of Assembly. You accepted right away. As the youngest MP, it was difficult to connect with the influential inner circles. You needed allies, so you brought Peter as your right-hand man. The birth of your son, Frank, who is a complete dick through the whole story, no matter how you play it, provided a brief moment of joy and relief. You uh, sacrifice work to spend time with your family or sacrifice family to improve your position in the party. There we go. Don't have time for a screaming baby. Along with Peter, you have done great things to cement your position in the party. Meanwhile, at home, Monica and Frank felt your absence. At the same time, President Soul increased his authority over the years. His growing ego started to cause strife within the party. Rex began to show. Soul's fifth election win. Wow. President Soul barely secured a majority in the election against the uh, opposition leader. Over the past year, people were growing discontent with corruption and the worsening quality of life. Meanwhile, calls for a United Swordland Party Congress became louder as a leadership struggle started to brew. You... Uh... Well, I, I would think that... Joining the internal opposition against Seoul... Would be kind of foresight on my part if things are not going good for soul or starting to not go good then maybe that but um, I'm going to support him I'm going to keep supporting Ark and Soul the contender for party leadership was Awald Alfonso a reformist and a talented business magnate with a growing popularity within the party you were trying to secure votes for President Sol, who noticed your loyalty and approached you with a lucrative deal. You had a meeting with him. The president offered you the position of Minister of Justice and Law in the next government if you backed him in the upcoming vote. Yep. August 1946. The Party Congress was nothing short of impressive. Banners of United Swordland were decorating every possible spot. Thousands of influential piddle... Blah. Political figures, lobbyists, and benefactors gathered for this turning point. The voting for the party leadership began. I'm going to vote for Tarkin Soul. Unfortunately, Soul lost. Yeah. During the Congress, Soul announced his retirement from politics. The system he had established were to stay much longer. His achievements wouldn't be forgotten. You didn't care about who was in charge. A month later, your daughter was born. Monica named her Deanna. She motivated you during a tumultuous period in the party. The general elections were approaching. Now here's where you can help me uh, 
shape this story? Should Anton just be flat out completely a douche, or should he be loyal and supportive of his family to a certain extent? Let me know. I'm uh, kind of conflicted on this. I've got my own personal me, which is probably going to run contrary to most of the things I do in this game. But I want to keep it to the theme of the douchebag playthrough, so uh, let me know what you think. The United Sorland Party was under the new leadership of Ewald Alfonso. You. Um, did your best not to help him. During the general elections, the main opposition leader was embroiled in a sex scandal with his secretary. He was replaced by the strong opposition figure Franz Richter, but the damage had been done. The extensive privatization program proposed by Ewald Afonso secured the election victory for the United Swordland Party. Over the next years, you did your best in order to make Swordland a better place, right? All that was necessary to climb up the ladder or dedicated yourself to the party and its success. We're going to watch out for number one. 1951. The presidency of Ewald Alfonso saw many bold reforms, but was followed by a serious economic recession. The other parties announced their bids for the 1953 election. But the unfair system hampered all opposition effort to win. You... I uh, thought your party could not survive another crisis. We're worried about economic recession. Worried that your reputation would be tarnished along with Alfonso. Once again, watch out for number one. Together with Peter, your presence in the USB grew and you became the face of a new wing in the party. You effectively took over the leadership as President Alfonso lost control of the country. The moment to make a move had come. You uh, blamed him for the crisis on television bribed and extorted his inner circle, or advised him to step down. To publicly shame him. Media backlash prompted President Alfonso to reshuffle his cabinet, but most of his inner circle abandoned him. Party eventually voted you in because of your charisma, charisma as a leader. Following this, you announced that you would be running for president in the next general election. It was your turn. And Peter Vector is going to be my alcoholic vice president. After visiting every city and town during the campaign, you made a speech on state television. You promised to enact democratic reforms or preserve national values. National values all the way. Great nation of Swordland, due to the incompetent leadership, enemies both internal and external are influencing our glorious nation. Today, more than ever, we need to unite under one flag and protect our values. Rusty Swordland, the broadcast ended. It was a very short speech. And with that, I got elected. Oh, wait, hang on. Gotta actually make it official. 1953 elections. Chapter 1. Didn't rain. Okay, so now I hope I can remember what I did for the thumbnail here. Facial hair. Hire. Accessories. Oop, there it is. Background. Hmm. I think I had the red one. Hang on a second. Yep, add the red one. And yes, I did make the thumbnail for the series before I uh, actually started playing it. There we go. There's Anton Rain, douchebag. El douchey. I will not be able to change how Rain looks. All right. As Anton Rain, you have made promises to the people of Swordland in order to gain their votes. They must be considered very carefully. Uh, Swordland's economy has been based on planned doctrine. Since his formation under the former president, Ewald Afonso, enacted free market reforms. Now the country finds itself in between two different economic sy systems. Um, uh, oh, oh uh, power, money, power, money, power. 
I'm going to promote the planned economy. Uh, the intensifying global rivalry, rivalry between capitalist Arcasia in the West and communist United Cantana in the East is opening new diplomatic possibilities. Uh, Sorden couldn't take steps to align itself closer to one. Um, I don't really want to go full-blown communist. But aligning myself with a capitalist economy with a planned economy might not be the best way, so... We'll go with uh, United Cantana and the commies. In recent years, Bludish, Wesic, and Agnolian immigrants flocked to Swordland due to relaxed immigration laws enacted by Ewald Alfonso. As a result, tension in between swords and immigrants have been increasing. We're going to tighten the immigration. Uh, we have also promised to focus on a certain extensive subject within our first term. Uh, the people expect us to solve the negative situation within this topic while providing an overall improvement to the related policies. Uh, health. Uh, service quality between urban and rural hospitals has been getting increasingly worse. The average life expectancy has dropped significantly. Education. <clears throat> the lack of schools, teachers, and even classroom equipment in certain areas caused massive gaps in the previously robust education system. Uh, law enforcement. Increased crime is pushing law enforcement to their limits while judges at courts deal with a huge and expanding backlog of legal cases or military. Uh, the military protects the country from hostile threats, and while some see it as a massive financial burden, others argue it as a critical deterrent. So it would be up between law enforcement and military. Uh, if I go law enforcement, that uh, gives me, um, I think, more leeway to crack down internally. Military is... Uh, I'm going to go with military just because I kind of know that I'm going to need some form of military here uh, going forward. Promises will be remembered and have consequences. Are you sure about your decision? Yeah. Two weeks have passed since we won the election, and now I was about to be sworn in as the fourth president of Swordland. Thousands were watching the inauguration ceremony and cheering my name, Anton Rain. The die was cast. In the distance, the Maroon Palace stood atop of the famous Hill of Pride. I had no way of knowing what future awaited me here. Now, this is the thing about the game, and I have to give the devs 110% credit for putting a backstory together. Uh, these hotlinks here, they all have stories within the codex, and like Wikipedia, they can lead to other stories. The Hill of Pride is inside the large Capitol Park. Maroon Palace is it's kind of like the White House or the Kremlin, whatever you... So, here's this. I looked at my family. My son and daughter, Frank and Deanna. That's Frank. That's Deanna. That's my wife. Her eyes were glimmering with pride. Then I turned towards the key people who made it all possible. Of course, each individual was promised an important position in my cabinet. As my thoughts slowly faded away, the reality of the situation dawned on me. Or so Hawker, that's him, he's the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, and he's waiting for me. Time for the oath has come. Let's get started. Please repeat after me, I do solemnly swear that I will respectfully execute the office of President of Swordland and to the best of my abilities, preserve, protect, and defend the people and constitution of the Republic of Swordland. You may now deliver your inauguration speech, Mr. President. Let's begin. Ah, dear citizens of Swordland, brothers and sisters, my fellow swords. Not get too personal with them, I am their ruler after all. The crowd looked very eager to listen to me. Current dire situation, the idea of unity. But with that, for many generations, this country and its long history have kept us tied to an idea. The idea of unity and our people's right for a free and prosperous life. 
with our capabilities. Our workers are no less productive than a decade ago. Our capable minds are no less inventive. Our products and services no less requested than they were last week, last month, or last year. Future awaits us. Time to turn our faces to the east. I promise you we will stop the recession and eliminate poverty. First, we must rewrite the broken constitution of 1929. We're going to go with this one. A little vague, but whatever. It's time for a united and powerful swordland once again. Change now, not in the next dec decade or years today. Our cap capacity as a nation has never been greater. Time for a united and powerful swordland. Hundreds of thousands cheered. They were shouting my name in unison. They felt the responsibility, the power, and the burden all at the same time. Raise a fist. There we go. <laughs> Took a long look at the people of Swordland to burn this moment into my memory. One of the presidential guards came by to notify that it was time to leave. I made my way to the leading car in the motorcade. The presidential state car was a jet black Cadilla with flags of Swordland above the front headlights. Next to it, a man was holding the door. Serge Walkner. Now, this is where I'm going to feel like a dick. It's going to be hard to be a dick to this guy. Hello, Mr. President. Still under the effect of my speech, the speech I made, hearing my new title made me smile. If you allow me to introduce myself, I'm Serge, your new driver. Uh, let's see here. Nice to meet you, Serge. Sometimes they don't actually exactly offer you the worst possible choice, so we'll just have to play along. Uh, it's an honor. He respectfully bowed his head before opening the car door and gesturing inside. I entered the car. We will be heading towards the palace. The motorcade began to move. On the way, Serge proceeded to explain his duties as a driver. As the minutes passed, I found myself lost in thought again, barely paying attention to what he was saying. He suddenly made a gesture towards the now closer palace. Beauty, isn't it? The Maroon Palace? Here it is. He was right. Sunlight glinted off the palace's many maroon-colored domes. It was so bright that I had to look away. Every time I look at it, I'm reminded of my duty to this nation. Uh, it's in good hands now, so do I, Surge. It's the beating heart of the nation. Uh, we all owe a great debt to the man who led the country from here. Uh, dude, it's just a building. You're right, Mr. President. Now, this guy is, he's like madly in love with me throughout the whole thing. I wonder how much I can beat him up before he turns on me. <clears throat> I don't know much about architecture, but for me, it's the most beautiful building in all of Holsword. Holsword is the capital of uh, Swordland. In case you didn't know that already. Car drove past the majestic gates, continued uphill to the entrance, and stopped in front of the doors. Serge got out of the car and opened the door for me. Have a great day, Mr. President. A. Morgana West Corps. He referred to the famous Swordish phrase from the times of revolution. A. Morgana West Corps Vector Insista, which means morning will come, victory is close. Vector Insista. Aha! Here we go. I made my way upstairs through the extravagant corridor of the palace, and marble and engraved wooden finishings decorated the interior. My footsteps echoed in the colossal halls. The guard bowed their heads in respect as I opened the massive door to my new office. Okay. Now, how this works. There are news articles from all these papers you can read. Uh, these little icons up here are um, activities that you can participate in. You don't have a choice because I don't think the story goes forward without it. Um, also, you have uh, reports from other parts of the countries. This is our country here. Uh, this is Agland, uh, Urgia, Argus, Argus, there we go. Uh, down to the south, we have uh, Lesbia. Uh, across the 
Archean Sea, we have Vogs Land, Magnolia up here. Uh, this island is going to play a part in the story going forward. Not to spoil anything. And then the big bully on the block, Rumberg, up here. I think it's supposed to uh, represent uh, Soviet Union. Uh, from what I read, that uh, this is roughly based on uh, 1950s Turkey. Uh, Wayland's down here. That's where the uh, protesters came from. But we're president now. We've got work to do. So we are going to get into the work as we move th forward through the series and into the next episode. Uh, but for now, I'm going to call this one to a close. I'm going to try and keep these episodes maybe around the half hour, 45 minute mark. Um, sometimes it's a little hard to do that because uh, the amount of stuff that you have to do um, and the way the story plays out. Uh, I know I think I had a couple episodes up in over the hour in my uh, first playthrough. Uh, but we'll get into the uh, work of governing Swordlin in the next episode. And uh, going forward, we're going to see how, uh, how many enemies we can make. I know there's a lot of different paths that a story can uh, take, depending on the choices you make. So I'm really, really, really excited to see how uh, being a complete dick to everybody is going to affect the story. I may even get assassinated, who knows. Anyway, that's going to do it for the premiere of Season 2, Episode 1 of our douchebag playthrough on Suzerain. If you like the episode and want to help the channel out, like I said at the beginning, hit the like button. Uh, if you want to follow along through the playthrough, hit the subscribe. Leave your thoughts, tips, and advice in the comment section down below. Really curious what you guys uh, think I should do going forward. Uh, I know we haven't really gotten into any of the uh, choices offered yet, but... Uh, we will do that. Days 7, 6, NY saying thank you very much for watching and have yourself a very good day.